Greetings, beautiful souls. It is your sister at heart. My name is Princess Sandra, and I am here again with a, no, let me correct myself, not with a motivational soul, soul healing video. Of course, it's going to be soul healing to find out the truth that you have always known, of which I'm going to reactivate within you, but you never got a chance to hear it verbally. That is the aim of this, to come across people who already know this, but who want confirmation. And so if you are coming for the first time, please do press the subscribe button down below and press the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate you, okay? And today's video comes with a disclaimer. I, I am not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. These are just my observations and my beliefs. And more than anything, this video is spiritually based. It's about spirituality. I'm going to be explaining these things under the spirituality ideologies you don't have to take what i say and use it to diagnose yourself always consult with your professional medical doctor or psychiatrist and psychologist should you wish to get assistance out of the things or sicknesses or illnesses that we're going to be discussing under this video do not use this video as a sole decider or something to use to diagnose yourself always seek professional help now that we're done with that, let's just go straight to today's video. So we have something that is called etymology. Etymology is looking out the root or the foundation of where a particular word comes from. It could be a one word that is a combination of two languages that were put together to make up this word. And you need to understand the a word that is called a this is combines two words, which is this and is. This we know which we use it as dissatisfied, meaning you are not satisfied, it's liked, you are not liked. So it is like a, a prefix that we use to indicate the lack of or a negative situation of that particular topic. In this case, this is meaning there's no is, there's no isness, there is pain, there's discomfort. They, they are these vibrations that are causing inconvenience with your well-being. And diseases are manifested. You know, there are energies that were once manifested by people either who are living or those who are no longer here. That is why you'll find that as people, we have genetic diseases, we have inheritable diseases. You find that this was a particular ball of vibration or of energy that was created out of someone's situation at that time and they suffered as a result they suffered that particular disease and it keeps coming back in the next generation because it is not yet fixed so diseases are energies that are created by human beings like me and you you are not at ease when you have a disease you are not comfortable so you are like in the vibration of of lack so in etymology it teaches us how these words are created and the creation of these words, people just create any sound using any languages that were there at that time and combining to create something new. That on its own becomes an energy because it is driven and there is an intention why it's being created to describe a particular situation. In this case, to describe a situation of somebody who is not at ease someone who is not well healthy in a, with their health health wise someone who is vibrating lower and as a result their health is taking a toll because of this low vibrational energy that they're operating with so now if we look at this the way that we are explaining it you can also look at it in the opposite way that means if you can create words and give them power and you give them power by the intention behind you creating the word or using the word that is why we have things such as affirmations affirmations are very helpful especially for people who are going through their self-healing journey or going through counseling where they have to revisit their traumatic experiences you find that you have to do affirmations make yourself believe these beautiful things that you're saying and give them life and give them positive energy so they can come back to you and operate within your space and, 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 and change your situation around. You give it power, you determine the frequency that is within a word. 
but words which were created by other people become spells because they've already invented, invested within particular words that they created certain energies. So when you wake up in the morning and you call your family members good morning, you, you are already talking about moaning, yet you just woke up when you should be using words that are encouraging the gratitude of waking up and being alive and, 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 and what you are still yet to do in a day. No, they had to form a particular word that is going to be different in writing, but similar in pronunciation, creating similar vibration so that they, you will say such things and your subconsciousness will hold on to what you're saying and it will manifest itself into a disease, which in this case we call a disease or a sickness. Giving meaning to words, whether that are created by ourselves or by those who were there before us, being intentional about how you give meaning to the words or how you select the words that you, you use. You are deciding on the vibration that you want to vibrate on in that particular situation when you use those words. So everything is, is coded. Everything is coded in life. Everything is numbers. We are living in a simulation of codes that needs to be decoded by us so that we can be able to make sense of our lives. So you have the power to do the opposite. You have the power to put a positive vibration in the words that you use on your day to day. Some people do this in a form of affirmation. It is a choice that you can make to change your situation inter intentionally. That's, that's a key word, intentionally. It doesn't happen by chance. You need to intend to do it and be aware of what you are doing. The, the diseases that people suffer from, they have history. They tell you about your history. They tell you about the type of people you come from, the type of people you are born from, the type of generational curses you need to break from where you come from, the type of situations and happenings and patterns of living that are really not positively influencing life, but that, that constantly keep on coming back and showing similar illnesses and sicknesses that need somebody really to cut them once and for all so that they stop being generational curses. What you suffer from is an indication of who you were, your ancestors, and who you are now. And your sickness have the power to decode codes of the past with your life. This is why we have a saying in our language that says meaning the sins of the parents will fall upon their own children or their own offsprings until they recognize them for what they are and change things around intentionally. Just like this example, I'm going to make a very rough example, a very general example with big people. Big people like plus size, thick people that's how they are called. And this is something that I've, I've taken some time to observe and I've communicated with different people who also saw similar outcomes based on this observation. And this observation is based on big people being kind. Majority of people who are big, they tend to be very kind. And it's possible that even that thickness comes from overgiving because their hearts are in peace knowing that they are not out there messing out with other people's lives and other people's peace and they're not distracting and disturbing anyone so they are constantly giving they are kind they are always trying to find balance and fairness to make sure everybody is well taken care of the best way they know how especially when it comes to something they will give you a plate to die for a plate you're gonna eat and never forget about it and how does this come about thickness i do strongly believe Uti, or being plus size is, is something that we inherit as well. I'm going to make an example with myself. I had a privilege of actually getting to meet my great grandmother, the, the grandmother of my father. And she was a thick lady, like not just thick, like she was a thick lady. And she passed in her 90s as thick as she was. And then I started looking back to my his soul resting power. Umkulu Ukredo Muta. He was also not a, a petite person. He was kind of thick and he was also in his own life journey and he had taught us and left us a lot of information that we sometimes as now the children who are left behind use to make sense of our lives to make sense of our history of our ancestors of who we are where we come from and we are always going to be grateful for that 
including my great grandmother. So another downside though of these people is that they tend to be kind because they have experienced unkindness. They are very they tend to be very emotional people who are kind, who are sweet, who are loving, who are welcoming, who know how to make people feel at home and at ease. So I strongly do believe Aguti this come from them having big hearts and they manifest thickness and bigness even in a literal outer form and this is just generally speaking and based on like i said my observation of the people who are in my cycle and people who are even i'm um, observing from further away and these are the people who at some point in time feel like they need to be people pleasing so that they avoid people to feel the things that they have been made to feel before so because they are very emotional they try so much to make sure that everybody is okay is not feeling sad you know they want to fight for justice they want to make sure that everybody is treated equally they tend to overgive themselves to people that they tend to care for they overgive themselves to extended family members or family rela relatives friends colleagues they always want to do extra and beyond and what mostly tends to happen is that they don't receive the same energy when it comes back to them people they either don't do anything at all or they just do bare minimum when it comes to giving back to these loving people so now they do this in hope that they're creating a, a form of of living that is harmonious but only to find a routine not everybody have the same agenda those who take care of themselves they are healthy but it's just that they have big hearts that will mimic the body would want to mimic the heart that they have so in my line of work there came a point in time where i was open to people who were requesting that they would like to share their personal experiences and they would wish to find what are the advices or how i can see their situation and share with them my own insight and with that experience it allowed me to come across a lot of situations that taught me a lot also as a person when it comes to spirituality to be specific for an example when you are a person you are in an unhappy relationship with this man as a lady and you're still fighting to stay in this relationship you're still fighting to see something good out of this relationship you are still hoping that this person is going to become something that you have hoped them to be because that's one thing most of us women tend to do we come and form relations with certain individuals who are not what they really are but we form that image in our heads and make them to be those things or we make and manipulate ourselves to believe that these people are kind these people are loving and we look for any small gesture that they're going to do and use it as a validation that this person has a potential of being a good person it's just that they haven't you know gone through certain things yet we, we think we are god we think we can change people <laughs> why i don't know so when you are a type of a person or a female who is in that situation and it comes a point where now you need to start a family with this particular individual and in this case your partner you have to you want to start a family but you keep losing children you keep losing babies you keep having stillborns you keep having miscarriages there is a high possibility that you need to wake up and smell the coffee so i came to the point of learning and realizing that when that keep happening there is a reason why it is happening because a child is something that bonds two people not only two people two families not only two families two ancestors to form and come together to guide this particular spiritual being who have been manifested into a physical a being in this planet planet earth so there is going to be an eternal relationship with these two families because of this one person who have been brought here so the souls that come into a woman's womb they make their own decision to come and see because very very the word of mouth is already out there that things are not right in this particular home on this particular relationship even from the spiritual side they it is something that is well and like they are well and aware of because as souls we decide to be here that is why there are people who go through all odds 
and they were not supposed to be living, but they conquered all those odds and they still are alive and living and kicking till this day because they had already signed their contract that I'm going to come here and leave. I'm going to come here and leave and, and, and do what I want to. Uh, I'm sent to come here and do whatever their assignments might be because all of us, we have assignments. So when you keep on losing babies, when you have that particular partner, there is a possibility that you are getting a message that that's not the partner you need to come together and plan a long life with. It means that this person does not go with the same vibration of, of your energy. You're going to clutch if you force these things. Sometimes even having miscarriages is a blessing in disguise because you are being protected from this monster that you want to come together with. And because you haven't discovered his demons, you don't really know who this person really is. You don't know the ancestors that this person is going with. You don't know the type of angels this person is protected and operating with. So when it is going to, when it's clutching with what you are made of and what your purpose is, you are not going to have a child. You're going to have a difficult time having a baby with this particular person. So there comes a point in time when you go through spiritual things, when you've done all your other parts, uh, when you've done your medical side and there are no concluding reasons why these things are happening. Because there comes a point sometimes where you find even medicine have reach a dead end they have no explanation why this thing is happening they've done all the things that they feel was supposed to be done or fixed but there's just no explanation what's happening there you know that you're dealing with an ex you are, you are an ox or you're dealing with some sort of spell work that might have been done before you both were even born so when you force this to merge these two people who are now energies in the spiritual field you are now trying to put together possibly two enemies you, you're trying to create war and the people who are going to suffer the most out of that war it's you and your partner in a later stage so when you keep losing babies with a particular person chances are you are not meant to be together and it's something that is like a, a very hard rock to swallow it's a hard pill to swallow not even a pill it's a rock to swallow because you haven't found sometimes like things that are valid in the world's understanding which this person is not the one you are only getting a glimpse of spiritual signs. And many people, they tend to be very stubborn to listen from, from the spiritual guidance. They want to be literal and they deal with things as they see them, as they come logically. 